isn't on in Matthew 24. There will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. He added, these are the beginning of sorrows. Forced by hunger of failed crops and continuing civil war, these people have walked for several days to reach Coram. Now, exhausted, weak and malnourished, they wait patiently their turn to collect rations for the other members of their families, many of whom were too sick to make the long journey. The famine which still has Africa in its grip is the worst for many centuries. There are 24 countries in which the weather has disrupted the harvest for 15 years. The extent of the natural disaster has regularly been described by journalists in very biblical sounding language. Words like pestilence and apocalypse now feature in the articles. Go to Muglad in the Sudan for some of the latest tragic pictures. People who come to this corner of the camp at Muglad do not expect to live. It's known within the camp as the place where those who have no relatives lie down quietly to await death. It's the place where Majok Akech has chosen to wait. He's blind and recently orphaned. He's suffering from dysentery in addition to severe malnutrition. He's about 14, though years of hunger make him look much younger. A woman who was looking after him died three days ago. Some of the children in Muglad weigh less than half what they should. Aid agencies seem to fight endless battles to help such children. As soon as they stem the tide of death in one famine region, war and failed crops create a disaster somewhere else. The irony is that people like Bob Geldof have shown us that the world does have the resources to respond to the needs of a country like Ethiopia. But here, as in so many other places, the political struggle complicates and often wrecks the very best of intentions. In our part of the world, prophecies about earthquakes have recently had a special relevance. But when we felt the ground shudder or saw the plight of many of those displaced by the Bay of Plenty earthquake, doubtless many were reminded of the far more extensive disasters that have befallen places like Mexico in the last few years. The Bible prophesies a time of earthquakes in various places, and certainly our world in the last generation has been a trembling planet. The effects have been seen not just in the cities, but also in the countryside of countries like Colombia, where huge mudslides caused by eruptions and tremors have caused widespread devastation. On another front altogether, a pestilence of a different sort has reached right inside our health system, even to the supplies of blood, which should provide a lifeline for the sick and injured. The scourge is the AIDS virus, it's made not only a mockery of our free love generation, but also the sophistication of medical science, which is still battling to find an answer to something which seems to have all the characteristics of an apocalyptic pestilence. Many are asking in this day and age, where do the churches fit into prophecy? Jesus and other prophets in outlining end time events had plenty to say on the subject. The Bible speaks of an age in which churches would be strong on forms of godliness without any real spiritual power on display. It also warns that so-called spiritual leaders will arise claiming to actually be a reborn Christ or even a better version of Jesus. This is certainly the age of multiple choice Christianity with individuals like the Reverend Moon fulfilling exactly the prophecies about false messiahs. There's never been a time in history where we've had so much of this deification of men who, while preaching godliness, live in wealth and splendor in multi-million dollar mansions. That is, of course, until the tax man catches up with them. A time of spiritual confusion and a multitude of ways to choose from. That's the essence of Bible prophecy's description of the end times. There are a final group of prophecies which seem to put beyond doubt the view of many that we're living in the time of the end of the age. Many of the Bible writers urge us to watch events in the Middle East and match them up with the other signs. In essence, the Bible clearly predicts the return of the Jews to Israel and indicates that the generation which sees the new nation of Israel arise will be one of the very last.
the prophet Ezekiel warns us to look for a time when the modern nations of Iran, Libya and Ethiopia are hostile to Israel, and also to look for a time when Russia is in league with Israel's enemies. The falling into place of those happenings has only been of relatively recent times. The Middle East has become the predicted cup of trembling to the nations around about. Israel is becoming increasingly embattled, and the Arab nations, friends of the displaced Palestinians, would dearly love to see Israel's flag come down in Jerusalem and stay down. The situation in the Middle East is a little quieter in many ways than it was in the late 60s and early 70s, but the recent Gulf War has shown us what a volatile place it can be and how localised conflicts can spill over to involve almost the whole world. God's Word has a clear message on personal salvation as these perilous times draw to their predicted close. At the end of everything else we've talked about is one final prediction from the pages of the Bible, and that is that Jesus Christ will return to this earth. Now, if you think that's a fairy story, remember this. He came once before, and the details of his birth death and his resurrection are extremely well documented historical fact. We know more about Jesus than just about any other figure from ancient history. Also know that hundreds of years before he came the first time, the details were predicted with uncanny accuracy there in the Old Testament. There are about twice as many prophecies about the second coming of Jesus from the pages of the Old and the New Testament. We urge you to think about these things talk about them with us some more and take advantage of the knowledge.